Hello, my name is Jimmy Smith and welcome to another one of the Wine with Jimmy uh, YouTube channel sessions on WSET level three. This one is understanding the Rheingau in Germany for the WSET level three certificate, including the very intensive and intricate German wine laws as well. So I hope you are ready to take that all in. Here's a wonderful picture of Asmannhausen, which is on the far westerly point of the Rheingau district where some phenomenal Spätburgunder Pinot Noir is found in the region of the Rhine is in the background of there. Um, so this is remarkably useful for those of you studying your level three. We have a working written question at the end of this which I'll go through with you so you can understand the format and type of questions that may be asked by WSET and then how to structure your answers. Um, please if there's any comments or questions pop them in the YouTube um, comments section below this video or get in touch with any of the social media which is on the bottom of the slide. I am the on the far left hand side there at Wine with Jimmy and there's my two wine schools uh, in Fulham and in Streatham that's West London Wine and South London Wine and then Streatham Wine House which is my wine bar. And that's across all those things if you're that way inclined things like uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and so on. Okay so let's rock and roll. So where are we looking? Now, you may have already watched our one of our other German videos. We have one on the Mosel and talking about the Riesling grape variety. This one's going to be on the Rheingau, the real other important wine region, and then the wine laws. We do have another video which is coming out soon, which is on um, the other German regions and other grape varieties. So we are here in the southwest of Germany. Um, on that area which is around the River Rhine, of course, and it is the famous Rheingau district, which is just to the north of that area. Just so we can recap, um, the southwest of Germany is a cold continental climate uh, with summers that uh, are lovely and sunny but can be wet, um, but that rain decreases towards autumn with nice long autumnal sunny days. Um, good long gro uh, cool growing season here ensures ripeness and great high acidity is perfect for the Riesling variety um, here in uh, in the southwest of Germany. Okay, so a bit of a closer look here at the Rheingau district. So here we are. So here we have the River Rhine, which is running uh, from the right to the left hand side of this um, picture. Uh, and we have the River Main that runs into the Rhine. Uh, and that creates this much bigger river Rhine, uh, which is quite an important factor of the river. It is wider at this point than the Mosul, for instance, which we looked at in a previous video. That is important because the river Rhine, therefore, will actually uh, absorb more heat. It has more storage capability and also has more light reflection off it onto the vineyards that nestle just to the north of the river. So therefore, it does gain better ripeness than the Mosul Rieslings for the most part. Um, so you will expect on average somewhere like potentially around 1 to 1.5 percent more alcohol in the wines, but of course that could be sweetness as well. Um, so it's quite a famous area for Spätlaser, whereas the Mosul is quite famous for Cabernet, uh, and Spätlaser is a riper category or potentially sweeter category than Cabernet, and that's due to the conditions really in place in this area. Um, what else can we tell you about this place? So um, it is um, very prestigious. It's a small area, but very prestigious. Um, crafting really across the board some of the most um, uh, in-depth and full-bodied Rieslings we find here. Vineyards are located, as you can see, with all those green areas there, are located on the north bank for the most part, facing south, uh, and they are protected, as I put at the top of the picture, this big, big stretch here is the Taunus Mountains. So therefore, um, it's nestled in really between the river and the Taunus Mountains. So it's protected, and that gives it a longer protracted um, season. So better ripeness conditions in play there. Um, the majority of the vineyards actually sit sort of in the middle to the western end. That's where the big green expanse is there. The city of Wiesbaden uh, is just here, as you can see. Um, let me just get my pointer up here. So here's Wiesbaden. So there are some to the east of that around Hochheim, which actually makes some fairly 
uh, full structured Rieslings, but most of them are towards the west, the center and the west of the area. Um, Riesling dominates here, uh, mainly as drier examples, uh, and there are some of those grosser Gewach wines, which we'll look at later on on this presentation, uh, which are those famous um, kind of uh, Cru wines of Germany as dry styles. And here it's for Riesling and Pinot Noir. So we will tackle this a little bit later. Um, wines, as I mentioned, tend to be full body with a distinctive stone fruited note. If it is a sweeter one, often quite tropical, in fact. And then I have put here there on that far side where the picture was on the holding picture on the first slide, that is Asmannhausen. That whole area down here is quite famous for Pinot as it is a southwesterly facing aspect, making, making quite powerful Pinot Noirs here. So Spät Burgunder is found around that area. But really from Rudesheim and Johannesburg, these areas here are the famous village zones for Rieslings, really great Rieslings along that area. So they're two names that you are required to know, Johannesburg and Rudersheim for some famous areas making some of those quite structured uh, style um, uh, Riesling. That again, um, before we get onto the German wine levels, it is a south facing region, okay? It is on, so that's great aspect, that's better for ripeness. It is on slate, slate is well draining and it's heat absorbent, which means it ripens better again. Uh, it is next to the Rhine River at a wide point, and that means you get better light reflection, uh, but you also get that heat absorption in the river, which once again elongates the season. It really is a real culmination, uh, a nucleus of quality winemaking here in the Rhine Gau. Okay, so some German wine laws and then some, some German labels in Pradiketz vines. So we understand the area. Now this is applicable to all the regions. Um, so that's something we need to remember. Um, all the uh, PDOs, so the protected designation origins. Um, now there are 13 of these in total and it will appear on the label and it must only be from one region as well. So you cannot multi-blend between regions. So here um, we've actually got a few terminologies, but they will not mention or tend to ask you questions about the top two. So that's why they're not in bold. Um, so there is a small production of Deutsche Wein, which is just generic German wine, like every European country has. Uh, so you have a wine of Spain, uh, you have a Vin de France, etc. There's then sort of country wine, which is called Landwein as well. But the majority of German wine is actually as a PDO. So that is Qualitätswein, which will show some quality and can be dry through to quite sweet. And then Pradiketswein, which is the wine with a grading system of which there are six categories, which we'll look at a little bit later. Um, so just so you can see here, the left-hand one is quite a famous or infamous label. That is the Liebramelsch uh, of Qualitätswein Blue Nun. So that says quality wine and it says the Rheinhessen there, which is the region it exclusively comes from. Dr. Lusen, which is from the Mosel, as is identified here, and that is a Pradiketswein. It does say Pradiketswein just down here, but it also gives you the Pradiketswein grade, which is Spätlaser, which we'll go through in a second. So the highest level of quality there with the Pradiketsweins. Uh, normally. Other German wine lords, so the other things you'll find are geographical indications on the labels. So here is another Mosul label, this one around the Peaceport city. Um, so this is all about vineyard location. So Riegsgraf von Kesselstadt, are a famous producer from this area. Um, here it's a very, very European template. So it says Peaceporter Goldtropschen. And Peaceporter Goldtropschen means Peaceporter is the village or the town. In this instance, it's actually a city. And then Goldtropchen is the vineyard name. And that's classic in Europe. You have the place and then you have the specific vineyard. So it may be um, something like, I don't know, uh, Bone uh, Turon, for instance. Um, so it's a very, very typical thing to have the place and then the specific vineyard. Um, so that is classic for your higher end wines as well. Uh, the vineyards in German are called Einzelagen uh, and they are uh, yeah, remarkably important for really being specific about where your wines come from. Um, one thing we do need to mention here, I think we might go through this a little bit later, but let's mention it here as well. 
There are also, I mean, this label you see here, Peace Porto Gold Tropchen, means it's from one single vineyard site, which is just to the north of Peace Port, the city, facing south on wonderful steep slopes. It makes a crackingly brilliant wine. But you can get something called Peace Porto Mikkelsberg as well, which looks like it could be the same formula. So Peace Porto, the city, and then Goldtropschen or Mikkelsburg. And for those people that don't know, that sounds like the same formula, right? You've got the city and then the individual vineyard. But in fact, in this case, Mikkelsburg is a collection of vineyards and it's quite a large area for very generic wine. Um, the only way you really tell this if you don't know what you're doing is by the price point. So Peace Porter Mikkelsburg will often only be sort of three, four pounds a bottle, whereas Peace Porter Goldtropschen will often be sort of 15, 20 pounds a bottle, if not more. Um, so so yeah, it's a little bit of a confusing point and there are a few of those within Germany. Um, so some more things around the labeling terms you may see as well, as mentioned in your textbooks, we have um, trocken. So trocken is the German word for dry. In this instance, when it's on its own on this darting Falz label, that means this will be a dry wine. But you may, some of you may go, well, I, I've seen it on trocken beeren aus laser. In that instance, it means dried berries. Trocken beeren means dried berries, meaning noble rot. Uh, but on its own, it actually means dry, um, so without sugar. So this is a dry wine. Then you have something here in the middle. This is Gisler. This is Silvana Holb trocken, meaning kind of half dry. This can be anything from sort of off dry to medium um, and has sometimes according to some people, a slight negative connotation. So there is an unofficial term, which is on the far right-hand side here, fine herb, which means um, the same sort of thing. So Weingut Max Ferdinand Richter has, has called this Cabernet fine herb. Um, so those two mean very similar things. One official, the whole trocken, and the fine herb on the right-hand side, um, not official but the same, roughly the same thing. Other things you may find on the label, which are mightily important, these ones, in a bid to really start to compete with their dry wines against the likes of Burgundy, um, they have created um, a, a, a really a, a group of winemakers that can craft these specific single vineyard dry wines of very high quality. So the group or the association which is uh, in charge of this is what's called VDP. So these are the Verband Deutsche Prädikatsweingüter. Uh, so this is uh, basically a, a group of winemakers um, that have the grading system, and they will carry this very famous, you see on the capsules here and on the labels, the famous sort of German eagle with some grapes in the middle. Um, if you are elected to the VDP, then you can start to produce these wines on the right-hand side. And these on the right-hand side are called GGs, or Grosse Gewach. Uh, and you'll see the bottle will carry an embossed GG symbol with the grapes on top of it. And the label will also carry the GG here. So it says here, Weilen und Sonnenhoch, which is actually from the Mosel the town, which is Weilen, Sonnenhör, the vineyard, as we learned earlier, Riesling dry old vines from S.A. Prum. The GG here, meaning it's going to be dry. So this um, this terminology of Grosse Gewach means um, a dry single vineyard wine of very high quality. And these are the finest wines in Germany for dry wines. They really are very high quality. Um, it does apply to different grapes across different regions. Uh, so in the Rheingau, for instance, it is just Pinot Noir and Riesling. In the Mosel, it is only Riesling. So there are different terminologies, uh, or different grapes rather, allowed for Grosse Gewachs depending on the region specific. But these are certainly some of the most age-worthy, wonderful dry wines that can come out of Germany. Uh, really wonderful stuff. Um, so then the other terminology that you're going to find, of course, is for the Pradekatzwein. Okay, the Pradekatzwein system is a grading system of very high quality. Uh, so the um, this system 
is really in place on the level of sugar which is available in the grape. So the, the grading is determined by the level of sugar or potential alcohol that will come from the grapes. So here we have a, um, a six point system. I've actually got five in the triangle and ice vine is just um, nestled in because it's very rare. It's nestled in between Birken Auslaser and Trocken Birken Auslaser. Um, so if you find these terminologies on the label, from cabinet at the bottom up to trocken birren auslaser at the top, it gives you an indication of the sweetness or potential alcohol. Uh, so let's have a look at these. Now, you can see that I have drawn in a dotted line here, which separates the bottom three, which is cabinet, spate laser, and auslaser. Okay, and then the top three, birren auslaser, Trockenbeeren aus laser and ice fine. Now, the sugar that is found in a Beeren aus laser, an ice fine, or a Trockenbeeren aus laser are naturally so high that they will only ever produce sweet wines. Um, so it is impossible to ferment them fully. So, therefore, these are your sweetest wines of Germany's highest grading system with TBA being at the top of the tree. To give you some very approximate numbers, now these are not official, um, they change every year, and also um, uh, they are approximations, but it gives you an idea. So I'm going to scribble down some numbers here, uh, and these are your potential alcohols. So the potential alcohol of... Um, of a, of a TBA is normally somewhere around 21% uh, uh, ABV, okay? That's the potential alcohol. Now, of course, it will never get up to that number because yeast doesn't fully ferment that much. It ferments up to around 15. Um, but normally, they won't ferment that high. They will ferment up to around 7%-ish, maybe 6, maybe 8, somewhere around the low numbers. Uh, and that means there's a lot of unfermented grape must in that wine. Uh, if you think about that, if we take the number six, you've fermented it to six ABV, you have therefore 15% unfermented uh, potential alcohol. And that's quite a lot of sugar. That's roughly 150 grams per liter. Birrenhaus laser and ice fine combined are a potential of about 18% ABV. Okay, so less sugar than Trockenbirren Auslaser, but still quite sweet. Um, these will normally be bottled around the same again, like TBA, at something like 6 to 8% ABV. Um, that means there is less unfermented grape sugar left in the wine compared to, to TBA, but still a lot. So these are still all very sweet wines, these styles. And to continue this number, I'm going to go down to Auslaser, which is the potential of about 15% ABV. Um, it will change year by year, but roughly. Spätlaser, which is about 13%. And then Cabernet, which is about 11% ABV. Okay. Um, so some approximations for you. Now let's take the bottom one, Cabernet. Fairly big production of this across all the quality wine regions in Germany. As it says on the left, can be produced as trocken, that's dry, as well as sweet, um, and up to sweet. So, for example, let's take that bottom level cabinet. Let's take the magic number 11 there. So 11%, if you fully ferment all of your grapes, because your potential alcohol is 11, if you fully ferment to 11, there you, you've left nothing behind, no unfermented residual sugar. So therefore, this will be labelled as a trocken. So on the bottle, it will say cabinet trocken. But you could, with the same grapes, actually stop the fermentation early at about 7%, and that leaves behind about 4% unfermented grape must, and that will be listed as a cabinet, just a pure up cabinet, no trocken and that will be a medium to sweet example, okay? And it depends on how much it's fermented. You know, it might be more off dry as a style because it might be fermented up to 10%, uh, where there's only a little bit of sugar left behind. Spätlaser's potential is sometimes around 13% ABV. So if you fully ferment this to 13% ABV, that makes a Spätlaser trocken. 
Um, spät laser means late harvest. That makes a late harvest dry, a dry, a dry like late, late harvest. But just like with the cabinet, you can stop the fermentation early at say seven or eight percent, and that will leave the sugar behind. And the same with Ausch laser as well. But Ausch laser doesn't tend to be dry because 15% ABV is quite high for a dry white. So they do tend to be um, on the sweeter side of life, um, though they technically could still be dry. So you can find some Ausch laser trockens in the market, certainly in cooler years. So that gives you an idea of those. So let's just let's just sort of look at that um, and just put throw, throw a few things down here. I'm going to put cabinet and then in brackets trocken just below that. Oops, or talken, sorry. Trocken. Okay, done. Spät laser, we can have that as well as trocken. I mean, it says it on the left, but I want to make this very clear for you. And then Ausch laser can also be trocken, remember. But let's put a little bit of an asterisk next to that and say that's quite unlikely. It's technically possible, but it's quite unlikely. So just to recap, you can let's take spate laser from the same vineyard, you can make two wines. You can make a spate laser where you fully ferment, and that's called a spate laser trocken. And then you can, with some of your grapes, um, you can stop the fermentation early and make a spate laser, which will be sweet. Uh, and this is commonly done for diversity within Germany. So let's just go through these steps one by one. That's an overview slide of the Pradiquettes vine. So the first one we're going to look at is cabinet. Okay, so let's get an idea for what cabinet is all about and and what to expect from it. Okay, so cabinet is the lowest Pradiquettes fine grade. Uh, that's fine. Um, it is um, often produced in areas like the Mosul, which are some of the coolest because cabinet is the lowest potential alcohol. These will be the lightest. Uh, and most acidic of the examples of Pradiquettes vine. Um, they're often kind of produced as cabinet, uh, as kind of a medium, maybe off dry, to medium dry in style, um, but can be, uh, can be up to me you know, medium uh, and medium sweet. And that all depends on, on the winemaker, um, the choice uh, of the winemaker, okay? Um, now, the Mosul is famous for, for cabinet styles, very famous because of its cool climate conditions. Um, and uh, you'll often see um, for a cabinet, alcohols will be somewhere around, uh, sort of around sort of eight to 9% ABV. Put that down. Uh, and then for a um, uh, a cabinet trocken, just the dry style, of course, this is depends on the year, but that will often be somewhere around uh, eleven to twelve percent ABV. Okay, um, so that is cabinet. Often ex ex expect things like green apple, lemon, um, very sort of citric and green characters are the most common with your cabinet style. Um, and there are some examples of cabinets that can have sous reserve added to them as well. This is uh, sugar, grape must added to it, but that doesn't tend to be the common one for premium wines. Okay, so that's cabinet grapes, um, making some of the most fragrant, lightest styles, fruity wines coming from often the Mosul, for instance. Then we have spät laser. Okay, spät laser, as a category is um, the next one along, it means late harvest. And that's the first thing you should put down, immediately translate what it means. So late harvest. So this means it's going to be picked somewhere around sort of one to two weeks after um, cabinet. And that's where you're going to find that extra little bit of sugar. Um, so as I mentioned, you will find things like um, uh, you know, riper, more concentrated characters here. Often think of things like peach. Um, the fruit's a bit sweeter here. And with a spate laser, if it's just a spate laser, oops, you'll expect somewhere between sort of, uh, I don't know, seven to eight percent ABV. And then there, of course, is spate laser trocken. 
which is going to be somewhere normally around 13% ABV. Okay, and they can be wonderfully rich and rounded, the Spate Laser Trockens styles. Um, so yes, and by the way, we are um, really just talking about Riesling with this. Though the Spate Lasers and Aus Lasers of Prada Ketzwein, all of this list can be applicable to other grapes, we are really just talking about Riesling for the level three certificate. Okay, so that is your late harvest style Spate Laser. Next up is Aus Laser, and we have the same part word in this one again so let's uh, let's identify that this is not working for me right now hold on here we go let's identify that so laser means harvest so this is spät laser so this is sorry this is aus laser and that means selected harvest okay whoops um so Whereas Spate Laser is just more ripe grapes, Aus Laser is even riper grapes. They are selected. So this will be hand harvested. Uh, selected berries, which in French we call this parcellage. These are very ripe berries, um, which will be uh, would be hand harvested. Sorry, hand is spelled incorrectly. There you go. Um, and uh, they will be very, very ripe. Uh, and th there will be there'll be more ripeness, more concentration, and more richness than spät laser. Uh, and um, there can be a little bit of noble rot uh, in this as well, possible noble rot, but often only small percentages. And Aus laser, the typical here is it's bottled at around seven to eight percent ABV. But remember, the potential alcohol is actually about fifteen, so that makes it quite a sweet wine. So often, often, you know, quite sweet. Okay, um, technically dry ones can be produced as well for Aus laser, but that does tend to be exceptionally rare. Then we have Birren Aus laser. Okay, Birren Aus laser. Um, let's get the arrow, which has not been working for me too well, but here we go. Okay, so this has the same word in it, but with a prefix of Birren. So it has Aus laser in it, and then prefixed by Birren. So this means, uh, let's directly translate it, berries of a selected harvest. Okay, so this means real sort of selection again, but in this instance, higher percentages of noble rot uh, and, and plus very ripe berries. Okay, um, now they are complex, they are robust, they are rich, um, they generally have quite low alcohol, so often bottled at uh, sort of around 6% uh, you know, ABV, uh, and that means the potential member was 18 from the last slide, so that's lots of residual sugar left behind. They are honeyed, they are marmalade -y. They they have a wonderful complexity behind them. That is Birren Aus Laser. Um, then there's trocken birren aus laser. Okay, so that is what's there as TBA. Uh, now, a lot of students ask me, do we have to remember how to write it? It's quite easy if you spit it into its words again. So let's go through those. And I love German because it's so phonetic. So you have trocken. Uh, so let's write down trocken here. But you have birren as well, which we've already talked about. And we have aus laser right okay so we have we have a lot of things that we already know here so let's identify those um let's put three arrows here okay uh, and what we have then is trocken in this instance because it's prefixed it's dried uh, birren uh, berries and then aus laser selected harvest okay so that, that means, whoops, that means um, dried berries of a selected harvest. Uh, so these um, really, in this instance, are very high percentages of noble rot. Okay. Um, you know, really quite, quite complex. Um, so very high percentages of noble rot. 
of course, very ripe berries as well. Um, um, heavy selection. And these, of course, produce very complex styles. These will be bottled also at around sort of 6% ABV, um, but the potential of a TBA is well into the 20s. So these are very, very sweet wines, very complex and very, very age worthy. Um, OK, so that's TBA. And then the last one here is Ice Vine. Um, these are exceptionally rare. OK, um, and therefore you know, only produced in the years that will allow it. OK in certain years um, and that is where the right conditions are in place i'm not going into ice fine conditions today that's going to be in another presentation around sweet wines but needless to say it's from frozen berries and this needs to happen in very extreme conditions where the winter has these very cold conditions in play um, they are exceptionally acidic and they balance the sweetness wonderfully well but they are very expensive due to their very rare nature and they sit at around the same potential alcohol level, uh, therefore sweetness, as Birnausch laser, sometimes just below TBA. So um, that is, uh, uh, ooh, we don't want that one there, so let's get rid of that. Um, so that is the presentation for the Rheingau and wine laws. Um, Germany is quite complex, so it will take a bit of time studying that. Let's just go through a Part, a partial written question so you understand a few of those things. So here is a label from Dr. Lucen, which uh, is a fantastic producer in the Mosul, just outside of Bernkastel on the way to um, Velen. Um, and it's a Velen and Zonnenhör, this one, and it says Riesling, Spätblaser, and Mosul, 9%. So mentioning on the last uh, slide, let's just talk about that quickly. You will see that the alcohol uh, is uh, around 9%. But really, for a spate laser, the potential alcohol is normally somewhere around 13% if it, if it was to be made into a dry wine. But you will see that there is no trocken after spate laser here. So this is not a dry wine. It is a sweeter wine. And if you take 9 away from 13, that's 4% unfermented, roughly 4% unfermented grape must. So this is going to be roughly sort of a medium sweet style, the uh, Spätblazer here. If it was a dry style, it would say Riesling Spätblazer Trocken, and the alcohol down here would say something like 13%, somewhere around there. Um, so it's asking to identify the following from the label, just a bit of a labeling identity exercise. exercise. So region, first of all, is of course the Mosul, which is just down here. Okay, nice and easy. Pradiket's fine level. Well, the Pradiket's fine level is Spätblazer, which is just here. Okay, uh, so that means late harvest. The vineyard is Zonnenhör, which is here. That actually means sundial, the most famous of the German uh, Mosul area, the middle Mosul. And Velen is the, uh, the, the village. Now, it says Velenur. That means belonging to Valen. It means that the vineyard belongs to Valen. So the, the, the village is actually called Valen, or the town here. OK. Um, and describe the Pradiket's vine in greater detail. So on the last slide, uh, the Pradiket's vine was Spät laser. OK, so here we go, Spät laser. Spät laser are made in the same way as a cabinet, uh, but are riper. So that means it is actually from from ripe berries, from nice ripe berries, but Spätblazer are uh, late harvest. And what I would do here is actually translate that immediately. I would say Spätblazer um, in brackets, late harvest. So let's add that in now. Are made in the same way as Cabernet, but are riper and more concentrated with more body, alcohol, and potential sweetness because they are picked later. So I would add that in as well. They are picked later than Cabernet. Citrus and stone fruits are common and potentially tropical notes on the sweeter examples like the one you have here. OK, so that's for four marks. Um, on this label, what does the term GG indicate? This is the Schloss Johannesburg, very famous. We saw it in the video. Riesling Trocken GG from Silberlack. Uh, Silberlack. So this is quite complex. Um, 
This means grosser gewach, that will get you two marks, which kind of means first growth. Made by a member of the VDP, Verband Deutsche Pradeketz Feingüter. Now, a lot of people look at that going, ah, oh, God, German words, ah! Verband should be easy to remember. Deutsche, of course, German. Pradeketz, Pradeketz Fein, which is the grading system. Gutta, so winemaker from Pradeketz Feingüter. Uh, so it's a bit easy when you break it down and will be dry qualitets fine from the best vineyard sites okay these are not uh the pradeketz vines these are considered the very best dry wines of germany okay uh so nice sort of succinct answer there um so that's just a few of the questions now please remember that this is one of three videos for the german section we have one on the mosul and riesling this one and then we have on the other german re uh, regions and grape varieties um so please do look out for those if you haven't done them already i hope you've enjoyed this we are always looking for feedback please leave us any comments or questions in the comment box below the video here on youtube or on vimeo uh, you can also get in touch with us on social media such as twitter um, Instagram and Facebook and all of those um, handles at the bottom of the slide just there plus they are on this one here as well it's been a big pleasure thank you so much I hope you've learned something good luck for your exam if it is forthcoming um, please do get in touch if you have any other questions also if you're in London please come and see us for a class a glass or a bottle it's been great to see you. See you soon. Goodbye.